जय इन टू ऑल सो आई एम डॉक्टर शिवानी अग्रवाल टूडेज आई एम स्टार्टिंग द लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ द कॉमन बस सिस्टम बाई यूज इन द मल्टीप्लेक्सर आई एम द फैकल्टी ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी अजय कुमार अगर इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद सो जस्ट स्टार्ट द लेक्चर नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द टॉपिक फर्स्ट वी हैव टू इम्फिसाइज वॉट इज बस बेसिकली बस इज अ कम्युनिकेशन पाथवे that connecting two or more devices the main characteristic of the bus is it is used as a shared media uh, transmission medium for transferring the data from the one place to the another place a bus may be uh, parallel or the serial parallel bus means we have to transmit the data parallelly across the multiple wires but the serial bus uh, what is serial bus serial bus is transmitting the data bit by bit in the serial format so these are the two type of buses are there parallel type and the serial type now data is transmitted from the one part to the another part so connecting all the major internal components of the cpu so that particular known as a system bus what is a system bus so it is transmitting the data from the one part to the another part connecting all the major internal components of the cpu now it divide into three major buses first is data bus what is data bus data bus means we carry carried out the data among the memory unit input device unit and the processor so by using the transferring the data suppose we have a data units of the 8 bits so we use the 8 bits 8 bit system for transferring the data if we have the uh, units of the 16 bits so we transferring the data by using the 16 bits bus uh, bus type so the second is the address bus how we have to define the address to the address bus for transferring the data suppose if we have a 8 bit data bus so the bus address bits are 3 3 address lines are required for transferring the data from the one place to the another place so basically these addresses are allocated by suppose this is a memory and memory divide the number of words and each word has the 8 bits so address bus depends on the number of words in the hierarchy suppose we have the address of the uh, 64 words so the value of the n is 64 n value is 64 so what is the value of x because x represent the address bits uh, address bits so in this case the address bits are 6 because 2 k is 6 equal to 64 so in this case the address bits are 6 so this is the address bus now the third is the control bus control bus means it carries the control commands from the cpu like the status signals from the other devices that completely coordinate the system each and every activity of the system controlled by the control bus now this is the interconnection structure of the bus these are the internal systems known as the system bus these um, connections have the cpu memory and the input output device each and every unit is connected with the other unit so these are the complete interconnection system of the uh, structure now the main topic that we have to define that is a bus and memory transfer so in the conventional digital computer system there are uh, there are a simple logic that we have a registers and each register has number of bits so if we transfer the uh, one one register bits to the another register so we use a number of wires for transferring the data suppose we have a uh, eight registers and each register has eight bits so we require eight is 64 wires in this particular transmission so this is a very complex architecture so we reduce that particular problem we use or we require the common bus system so basically what is the common bus system so in the common bus system we easily manipulate or easily define the architecture of the wiring how we have to reduce the wire from the 64 wires to the 8 wires or 64 wires to the 12 wires so we have we, the main motive of this common bus system is to um, to simple the system or we have to solve the efficient scheme for that uh, transferring the data from the one register to the another register at a time so there are two main perspective of the common bus system first is the multiplexer and second is the decoder 
so in this particular lecture we completely focus on the multiplexer part and the in the second lecture we have to start the focus with the decoder part so in this lecture we have used the multiplexer so first we know what is a multiplexer what is the basic working of the multiplexer then how the multiplexer we used for designing the converse system for transferring the data uh, bits of the one register to the another register so first we start with the multiplexer part so what is multiplexer multiplexer means we have 2 to the power n number of inputs and one output to q or n means there are m number of inputs suppose we have m m equal to 2 q or n so we have m number of inputs and how many outputs are there there is one output one output so the main working of the multiplexer is 2 q or n is to 1 where 2 q or n represent the number of inputs and 1 represent the output of the mux so it is the construction of m is to 1 or it says 2 to the power n is to 1 so in the multiplexer what is m what is 2 to the power n what is the value of n so each and everything we have to focus respectively first we have to emphasize what is m m is the number of inputs these inputs are say suppose we have four inputs so the value of n in this case is 2 because 2 to the power 2 equal to 4 2 का 2 equal to 4. So this 4 represents as the input and these 2 represent as the value of n. What is n basically? N is the selection inputs. N is the selection inputs or known as the control input. So this is the value of n in this particular example. And what is 1? 1 represents as the one output. Output of the decode. Uh, output of the multiplexer. So these are the Uh, things that are used for designing the multiplexer now this is the basic block diagram of the multiplexer this is 2 to the power n into 1 these are the in input and the output of the multiplexer or it known the size of the multiplexer this n represent the selection input this n represent the selection inputs this 2 to the power n represent the inputs this is the enable enable completely work like as a lock if the e value is low that means the lock is unopened so how we have to do anything uh, without opening the lock so e is the lock if the e value is high that means we have to do whatever you want uh, suppose we have a input 0 0 so we receive the output 1 output i not but if the enable is 0 so if any input there is no output is produced so this is the uh, complete characteristic of the multiplexer with the respect of the one output so this is the working of the multiplexer with the block diagram now these are the some mathematical uh, uh, topic with the respect to the multiplexer these are the inputs i not i1 i2 i3 these are the four inputs because we we have the size of the mux is 4 is to 1 so we have four inputs i not i1 i2 and i3 and 4 is to 1 is the size of the mux this we change the color of the pan so it is 4 is to 1 it shows the uh, size of the multiplexer these are the two selection inputs because the value of 2 to the n n value is 2 in this case so it is uh, two selection lines are there and why represent for the output value because we have a single output so in the mathematical formation if the inputs are 0 0 if the selection inputs are 0 0 so which input we have to select it the selection inputs is i not and the output produces same as i not when the inputs are 0 1 so we have to produce the output is i 1 when we have the input is i 0 or 1 0 so we have to select the input is i 2 when we have the input is 1 1 so we have to produce the output is i 3 now how we have to compute the output complete output Uh, by the boolean expression so it is basically we take the uh, find the expression of the boolean expression of the output of the mux so this e is common to all this i not have the value of 0 0 so the s not and s1 is uh, s not complement s1 complement r1 is the value is 0 1 so it is basically 0 is represent for the s1 complement and this is s not 
I2 have the value is 1, 0. So, it is S1 and S0 complement. I3 is not S0 and S1. So, this is the basic expression of the multiplexer. Now, what is the convert system? How we have to define the convert system operations? Why we designing the convert system that, are, that I already explained in the previous slide? Now, we have to focus how we have to design the convert system by using multiplexer. So, in the mathematical formulation, if we have k registers, we have to focus about the k number of registers. If we have the k registers and each register has n bits, how many bits are there? n bits. So, each to produce n line converse system, how many bits are there? n bits. So, we produce n line converse system. How many mux are required for designing the n line converse system and what is the size of the mux? So, size of the mux totally dependent on the number of registers. So, if we have the k registers. So, the size of mux is k is to 1. And how many mux are required? That is totally dependent on the number of bits. So, it is n bits. So, it is dependent on n. So, if the uh, bits of the register are 4. So, in this case, we use the value of uh, mux are 4. And if the registers are 4, so the size of mux is 4 is to 1. So, in this particular example, we have the 4 registers. That means the value of k equal to 4 in this case. And how many uh, how many bits are there in, the, in each register? So, it is also n equal to 4. So, it means we have 4 registers and each register has 4 bits. So, how many mux are required? Obviously, it is 4. I already explained it. It is 4. And what is the size of the mux? So, it is 4 is to 1. So, the our answer of these two questions are 4 and 4 is to 1. Now, the main part comes that is the designing of the converse system. This is very important. How we have to design the converse system by using multiplexer. So, this is the basic designing of the converse system by using the multiplexer. So, in this, there are 4 registers because we know that we have 4 registers and each register has 4 bits. So, these are the 4 registers we have named as a register as register 1, register 2, register 3, register 4 or register A, B, C, D. Each register has 4 bits. So, it is 0, 1, 2, 3. So, it is denoted as A0, A1, A2, A3. It is B0, B1, B2, B3. Same as C0, C1, C2, C3, D0, D1, D2 and D3. So, first construction is same like draw as a diagram. In this, we directly connected of each third bit with the 1 mux. That is D3 connected with the mux uh, mux 3 third bit so, register c third bit connected to the mux 3 uh, mux 3 uh, two registers b bits connected with the mux 1 and uh, mux 3 first bit and the register a connected first uh, last bit with the mux 3 zeroth bit but in the second opinion how we have to easy with this particular system so just we have to draw that the same question we have to draw the second suppose we have four registers how we have to draw in an easy way so these are the four registers register a register b register c and register d and each register has 4 bits. So, it is A0, A1, A2, A3. This is B0, B1, B2, B3. Corresponding to C0, C1, C2, C3. And it is D0, D1, D2, D3. Now, how we have to design by using the MUX? Because we know that if we have the k number of registers, the value of k in this case is 4 and the number of bits are n is 4. So, if the k is 4, so the size of the mux is 4 is to 1. 
साइज नंबर ऑफ मग्स आर फोर इन दिस केस तो वी हैव टू ड्रॉ द नंबर ऑफ मग्स इट इज फोर फर्स्ट मग्स सेकेंड मग्स थर्ड मग्स एंड द फोर्थ मग्स सो इट इज मग्स जीरो मग्स वन मग्स टू मग्स थ्री देर आर फोर मग्स राइट and each and every mugs has the size is 4 is to 1 4 is to 1 so the number of inputs of the mugs are i not i1 i2 i3 this is i not i1 i2 i3 same as i not i1 i2 i3 i not i1 i2 or i3 and each mux has a single output so we just draw the output of each mux now because we have the four inputs so we have the how many selection lines are there we have two selection lines so the selection lines are s not and s1 so we just draw the selection line with a different pen we have two selection lines s not and s1 each and every selection line we have to just attach with the multiplexer now how we have to give the input from the register so we just connect each bit of the register with the mux so how we have to connect because we want that we transfer a bit of the registers at a time at the receiving end so we just connect we have to say that register a means 0 0 register b means 0 1 register c means 1 0 and register d means 1 1 so we have to connect the each bit of the register a with the i zero bit of the each mux so i not we have to connect with i uh, a not connect with i not a one connect with i not of mux one a two connect with i not of mux two and a three connect with the i not of mux three so how we have to do this basically If the selection inputs are zero zero, so which input is selected in this case? The selection inputs are I not, I not, I not, I not. So when the four mux are connected at a time, so each and every bit of the register A transferred as a output from the mux side. This is the beautiful thing of the count bus system that we receive the output values as we want. So this is the beautiful. architecture of the common bus system by using multiplexer now we take the another example suppose we want the uh, register c bits out from the mux at a time so how we have to connect the register c bits so the register c we have to designate by the 10 so each and every bit of the register c we have to connect because the binary uh, the decimal number of 10 is 2 so we have to connect each and every bit of the register c with the i2 of each and every mux because if you don't connect any value of any mux so how we have to produce the output so for the register c just we have to connect c0 with i2 c1 with i2 of mux1 c2 of i2 of mux2 and c3 of i3 of mux2 so these are the connections these are the designing part and it is very important in the slave uh, for the uh, aqd slavers that how we have to design the count bus system by using the multi plexer so this is a very important topic of the aqd slavers because the designing is very important how we have to design the count bus system by using the multi plexer and what are the connections we have to use for uh, receiving the output by using the count bus system 
so what is the main working of the multiplexer how uh, how many multiplexers are required and what is the size of the multiplexer so each and every point of this topic is very important this is a very complex topic of the cua so just you have to design the common bus system by using this particular method or you have to use the previous method that is that i already explained but in this method and this method there are very small difference in do, um, both type of uh, diagrams in this diagram we have to connect each and every resistor bit with the mux 3 so you have to just uh, think in your mind that how we have to connect each and every bit of the mux 3 because the when the uh, as not uh, selection input values are 0 uh, 0 so only the one single in, uh, input is selected at the mux 3 mux 2 mux 1 and mux 0 so each and every bit we have to connect with the uh, a one register with the i not input so this is the basic working of the multiplexer so either this or the second type of designing you use any type of designing from that now the second question we will take just as a example now in this question this is a very beautiful question in this question we have six registers and each register has six bits so how we have to design the common bus system for these particular n uh, bits uh, n equal to 6 bits and the registers are 6 so the value of k is 6 in this case and the value of n is 6 in this case but how we have to define the how many mux are required and what is the size of mux size of mux depend on the k is to 1 so what is the value of k k is 6 so it is 6 to 1 no this is wrong because this is m equal to 2 to the power n so the construction always says it is in the 2 to the power n so it is not because 2 power 2 equal to 4 so it is less than of 2 to the power 2 so how we have to use as a construction at as, as a size of k is to 1 so it is 2 power n is to 1 so it is 8 is to 1 in the case of 6 is to 1 we always write as 8 is to 1 because this is wrong if you use 6 is to 1 so this is wrong because this inputs are 2 to the power n so you use your mind that how we have to construct k is to 1 as 2 to the power n is to 1 so it is in the case of n but some students have a question that ma'am how many uh, inputs are there because inputs are 6 because we have the 6 bits so how many mux are required mux are 6 we required 6 mux but the size of each mux is 8 is to 1 but we have the inputs are 6 so two inputs are wasted yes two inputs are unused in this particular case so in this case the mux are designed as 8 is to 1 and the inputs are i0 i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 and i7 this i6 and i7 are unused inputs because we have only the six inputs in this particular question so you always think about what is the size of mux because the size of mux completely depend on the 2 to the power n and it is the same as that you define the size of the mux so it is 2 to the n is to 1 so if the inputs are 6 or the resistors are 6 so we take not as a 6 is to 1 it is in the powers of the 2 to the power n so it is 2 to the 3 is to 1 so it is 8 is to because 2 to the 2 is less than the value of 6 because it is 4 so we always take the greater value so it is 8 is to 1 and in the designing of mux we have the eight inputs i0 to i7 but we use only the i0 to i6 six inputs are used and two inputs are unused in this case and the same as output is 1 and the inputs we have to connect is i0 i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 so this is the basic construction of mux that how we have to define the size of mux and how many mux we have to required so in this question 
if we have to expand this particular diagram, so we use I uh, mux naught to mux 5. There are 6 mux we have to use and the inputs are I naught to I 7. And each or every bit of the each register we have to connect with the mux. So, this is the designing of the mux. I think it is clear to all of you guys. Thank you for this particular lecture. Thank you guys. Now, in the second lecture, we have to focus on the uh, decoder and the general purpose register. So, thank you for this particular topic. Thank you.